Hi, it's time to do an often requested video. I probably get like one email a week from beginners that ask me, Dave, what textbook do you recommend? I'm trying to learn electronics. You know, what's the best book out there? Well, unfortunately, that is almost an impossible question to answer because there is no best best book out there because the problem with learning electronics is that there's so many different ways to explain the same thing that there is no one best book there's no one best way to explain it the best textbook is the one that resonates ha, pun intended i'm here all week it resonates with you you can give the same textbook to 10 different people and one might go aha this is the best thing ever i get it the way they explained it is the like i didn't just light bulb went off in my head and I totally understand it. Other people might say, nah, I, I didn't like that one, but I like this one. This one worked for me. And you just watch the comments down below. If you think like Pick versus Atmel is going to be like a big fight, well, <laughs> yeah, check it out down below because recommending the best textbook is, it, it's nigh on impossible. Anyway, what I'm going to do here in this video is do a shootout of four sort of like industry standard texts here that are used in various universities and college uh, courses uh, on electronics but they don't cover everything and this is one of the problems with electronics it's such a huge broad subject that it's virtually impossible to cover it in one book you just can't do it so you know you might want to start out with simple practical stuff we actually just discussed this on the amp hour this morning and be released in a couple of days uh we discussed about how you know it might be best to learn like practical examples what is a resistor what is a capacitor what's a how does a pull-up resistor work and you know like real what is voltage what is current and all that basic stuff and you can actually write like a 500 page book on just the real basic introductory stuff like that and the books we're going to look at today are they are huge they are enormous these are like um 1100 page like textbooks so these are absolutely enormous and these don't cover the basics or even some of the advanced stuff you won't find any maxwell's equations in here you won't find any control theory you won't find any even um a basic stuff like basic dc and ac uh circuit theory like mesh analysis and you know other sorts of stuff it's just not in here the ones we're going to look at today four different books just focus on sort of like active components and active circuits so they pretty much start at diodes transistors op amps you know filters things like that and these are a thousand pages just on those and this is like really important stuff so yeah here we go now the first one we're going to look at here is Floyd. Now, just up front, um, I am a bit of a Floyd man myself. I actually uh, <laughs> went through school with Floyd. So uh, yeah, there may be some bias there. In fact, I've got my original second edition Floyd. And yes, it does have the, uh, the contact back when you contacted, you know, <laughs> put contact on your books to protect them. Anyway, uh, yeah, that's my original edition of Floyd, but I do have the new ninth edition here this is the international edition but we're actually going to look at uh the digital versions of all these books instead of it's just easier to do it on screen than it is on paper here so this is the non-international edition it's got the most boring cover it's got a Wii on the front cover like why i guess Wii's were a thing at one point anyway floyd does come in conventional current version and electron flow version for all you electron flow fanboys for those schools that <laughs> really uh, insist on teaching electron flow instead of conventional current flow but none of that electron flow rubbish conventional current all the way and the next one here is uh cedra smith it's a uh quite a popular one i do have it somewhere but i can't find it anyway um it's the latest version of cedra smith the next one down here is uh malvino and Bates. So i do actually have the seventh edition but we'll take a look at the uh, i th believe these are all the latest editions anyway um the eighth edition of that and the other one we'll look at here is uh boylstead as well some people uh, swear by that one too and everyone swears by this or they don't swear by any of them and they only swear by the bible art of electronics yes i'm not going to include art of ele electronics why because it's not the same as the four books as you'll see these four uh, textbooks are near identical to each other in what they cover and just as a tease yes 
It's real. The Art of Electronics X chapters. I have a real pre-release copy. Copyright 2020. It's still 2019, but I've got it. You can actually pre-order this. So I'll actually uh, quote from the Bible itself, from the gods themselves, where often asked, is your book The Art of Electronics a textbook or is it a reference book? The answer is yes. It's kind of both. It's sort of like, it's a quasi textbook slash it's more of a reference book than it is a textbook it doesn't really it's not really a proper step-by-step -step course based textbook although i am aware that this uh the art of electronics um is actually used in like the harvard electronics uh, course or it was i don't know if it, I assume it still is anyway um yeah so but i, I really wouldn't recommend art of electronics as an actual beginner's textbook. It's just not that. Anyone involved in electronics should have a copy of Art of Electronics as a reference manual. And uh, like, it's just got a ton of practical stuff. It's the leading book for like practical circuit design techniques. And the X chapters has, has really got some even better practical stuff in it. Oh, nice. So that's why I'm not gonna review it here because these four textbooks, as we'll see in the uh, descriptions are you know, fairly identical in what they cover. Few differences. So up front, do I recommend any of these books for absolute beginners in electronics? No, unfortunately not. These are textbooks designed for electronics courses and hey, they're, they're fantastic for what they are. But if you need to know what a resistor is, what a capacitor is and what a voltage and a battery and all the other real beginner stuff, no, I'll have to do a separate video on uh, reviewing a really basic introductory electronics text. These aren't really it. These are designed for electronics as companion uh, textbooks for proper electronics courses. And let's have a look here at basically what they cover. Let's have a look at the contents of Floyd, shall we? We've got Introduction to Electronics, uh, which will be fairly basic. As I said, it doesn't cover like all of your DC and AC analysis and all that sort of stuff. It doesn't, it, it's not that. It's not an introductory book in that respect. So, but it jumps basically to diodes, special purpose diodes, and you've got uh, transistors, transistor circuits, uh, you know, then, then you've got various uh, transistor amplifiers, you've got FETs, um, amplifier frequency responses and stuff like that. You've got other uh, components. These are basically component-based textbooks. Uh, thyristors, then the op amp, basic op amp circuits, special op amp circuits, active filters, oscillators, you know, voltage regulators, and basic programming concepts for automated testing. Yeah. Let's go to Malvino down the bottom here. Malvino's got, once again, diodes. It starts out with uh, like semiconductors. Um, you might get some semiconductor theory, you know, doping and PN junctions and things like that. But basically diodes, BJTs, amplifiers, power, JFETs, MOSFETs, thyristors, frequency effects, differential, operational amps, linear uh, op amps, circuit applications, active filters, nonlinear, um, oscillators, regulators, and that's it. it it's near identical index. And then Boylstead down here, look at this. Diodes, BJTs, you've seen all before, FETs, FET biosyn, op amps, power amplifiers, digital, uh, some linear digital ICs, feedback and oscillator, and some voltage regulators, exactly the same thing. If we go up to uh, Cedra Smith up here, this one actually uh, starts out with signals and amplifiers and stuff like that. The order's a bit different, but covers the same stuff. Semiconductors, diodes, FETs, BJTs, transistor amplifiers, goes into part two. It's sort of organized a bit different, Cedra Smith. Uh, building integrated differential, multi-stage amps, frequency responses, output stages, operational amplifiers. Uh, and it does actually cover some digital stuff as well. Wouldn't recommend it as a digital textbook. I don't know why they bothered. Um, you really stick to a, you know, a, sort of like a standard digital one if you want to uh, learn, or a dedicated digital one if you want to learn digital. But anyway, filters and oscillators, blah, blah, blah. That's it. So, you know, like, you'll notice that there's no, what is a capacitor? What is a resistor? What is a voltage? What is a battery? All that sort of stuff. These are not the textbooks for you if you're after that sort of stuff. These are only covering uh, uh, actual, uh, you know, semiconductor type devices and ICs and their applications. Okay, let's start out by looking at Floyd, 9th edition here. Let's go. And it gives you a breakdown of the standard features of it and things like that. And, and it's uh, compatible with uh, multi-SIM. So it's like got multi-SIM examples and uh, things like that. I don't know, but does it come with a CD or whatever? 
I got no idea. And there's a breakdown of the chapter features and stuff like that for those playing along at home. Let's go. Uh, and then it's got references, uh, troubleshooting sections. That's always uh, very welcome. And examples are set off from text. You know, it's much improved over the existing, uh, like the second edition. Because like, you know, there's the second edition there. It's, yeah, it's, it was pretty good for its day, but uh, yeah, it's just a bit more colorful and modern. It looks like they got like lab experiments with circuit boards and things like that. So that's all pretty jazzy. Um, although really we're more looking towards these books as like, you know, textbooks, just teaching your circuit design. But it's nice to uh, do the lab experiments. If you, I, I assume, can you buy the boards or something? Again, there's all the things that we're going to cover. It's, I can't possibly look at all like thousand pages of all four books. So I'm just going to like randomly bum around and look at the differences. Now here's where you can see like introduction to electronics. There's no, what is a battery? What is voltage? What is resistance? What is capacitance? This is all assumed knowledge. You obviously, you know, they start out with the atom, which I don't necessarily agree with. I don't think that's the best way to start out. <laughs> like learning electronics, definitely not. Um, but of course you have to understand, you know, PN type uh, junctions and, uh, you know, PN technology and doping to un then understand diodes and transistors a bit better and stuff like that. So, you know, that's where this sort of textbook is going. So if you don't know what a resistor or a capacitor is, uh, you better go learn that first. So there you go. I'll just uh, scroll through here and you can stop those and read them yourself. This is the full uh, index broken down. Active filters, oscillators, operational amplifiers, things like that. Like I've I've done a whole like 45 minute video or something on op amps and I didn't even cover everything. I'm not sure if I covered all the stuff that this thing's going to cover. And we don't care about programming at the end. So there you go. They talk about atoms and the Bohr model and atomic numbers and you know like, uh, yeah, no, the periodic table. It's like, uh, yeah, no, you don't need to know this sort of stuff, but but it's in here, you know, but you can skip it. Yeah, like you don't need to know, you know, the orbital, uh, you know, parts of the atom and things like that. No, 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 no. And how it relates to insulators, conductors, semiconductors. Now we're sort of getting into the business conduction bands and valence bands and all that sort of stuff. I've covered those in video. So that that's actually, you know, important stuff. So I guess you've got to cover the atoms first to sort of, you know, and like we're only up to page nine. So it's not, you know, they're not going into great depth on this. It's appropriate for the purpose. And electron hole pairs and all that sort of stuff so I, I i like these graphics these are really quite nice there's certainly a nice uh graphic improvement from my existing uh second edition back um i think uh, yeah 87 88 um i was using that book so <laughs> yeah that's a long time ago in a galaxy far far away now we're talking pn junctions here we go so this is quite nice i like this um yep yeah, and it's got historical notes as well that's quite nice that's always good to see uh, hopefully they got that all all the way through the book and you know yeah this is looking re really good I'm happy with that and then uh, as is quite common in these books they've got uh, self tests in here so you know you can do little mini quizzes and stuff like that which is handy and the answers are probably in the back of the book are they and it looks like they're gonna have some application stuff so in this particular case solar power here's where we use you know PN junctions we're gonna use them in solar panels that's neat I like that that's that's really quite nice this is looking good. So I think Floyd might be hard to beat there in uh, the introduction to PN and stuff like that. Blimmin' on the boogie. Woo! I just can't. Okay, let's have a quick look at diodes here. Yep, I'm liking that. The different packages, that's really quite nice. Yep, there we go. We got how diodes were, yeah. Effective barrier potential, forward bias, reverse bias. Voltage current characteristic curve, all your basic stuff. I like that, you know, it's a real simplistic with a meter. Where's the diode in here? Uh, hello? Something's missing. Is that just the PDF version? <laughs> I don't know. They're talking about the knee for reverse bias diodes. Yeah, the classic curve. Temperature effects, very good. Uh, diode models as well. And that's about it for your diodes. And then we get into our, uh, you know, half wave uh, rectifiers, our basic circuits. Then we get down into transformer coupling, uh, and like we haven't seen trans, as you have seen, a transformer is often used to couple. Where have we seen transformers? Um, I don't know. Did we miss a book? And then we get into full wave, of course, the dual diode one, and then we'll eventually get into bridge. Yep, there it is. Yep, it's all there. Hunky dory. Yep, yep. We've got our ripple equations and stuff like that. 
no wackers. That's all good. I'm liking the graphics and things. The, the use of color is very good. Now we'll jump over to Malvino and Bates here, 8th edition. And once again, we'll just go through the intro and look at uh, diodes just uh, off the bat. So similar sort of thing here. Um, this is interesting, three kinds of formula. We'll check that out. But they do current sources, Thevenin and Norton sources. Whereas, uh, yeah, you didn't get, you know, this is like basic DC uh, circuit theory. So, you, you know, voltage sources. So you didn't get that in Floyd. So, you know, but I don't know how like comprehensive that's going to be though. So anyway, then it jumps into semiconductors. And there's the rest of the chapters there. And then you've got a separate chapter just for the diode circuits, uh, special purpose diodes. There we go. Let's go through. Okay, straight into it. Once again, they've all got this like guided tour of, you know, the practice problems. They're all like, they're practically copying each other, really. I mean, oh, this one's got, you know, a scope and uh, meter photos and stuff like that. Photos of real components. That's really quite nice. Yeah. And they've all got various like student resources and stuff like that. I'm not going to look at those. The three kinds of formula, the definition, the law, and the derivation. Okay, well, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's interesting. A approximations and stuff like that. That's a nice thing to put in there um, because engineering is all about approximations. Like, you know, you don't calculate things to five decimal places. You, uh, like, approximate things. Rules of thumb. That's a huge part of engineering. So I'd like to see actual rules of thumb in there. That'd be nice. Anyway, so they do go into voltage sources here, which we didn't get with uh floyd so yep second prox oh stiff region what and they're talking about this in terms of like approximations including the source resistance so they're already like they're jumping into the source like they assume that you know what a resistor is of course um you know and voltage and current and that sort of stuff and they're talking about voltage sources they're talking about source impedance and that like the stiff region based on the source impedance no i no stiff voltage source i uh Okay, but that could be more confusing than not, perhaps. Not really taken by that. Greater than, you know, they're talking about, yeah, greater than two orders of magnitude and stuff like that. <sniffs> yeah, no. Anyway, they're going into the Thevenin's theorem uh, definition. Once again, some basic stuff that I've seen this covered in, you know, many chapters in other uh, DC circuit theorem books. And then they've got, you know, some basic uh, problems like uh, the, the resistor array and, and stuff like that. Uh, Norton's theorems, they just cover it in real basic stuff. I'm not sure if they're going to use that further on in the book, if that's relevant. So that's different to Floyd, at, at least. It's got some of that, but it's not, I wouldn't call that comprehensive at all. Job interview questions. That's neat. Now we're talking conductors, semiconductors, intrinsic semiconductors, two types of flow, energy levels, all that sort of jazz. In electronics, all that matters is the outer orbit. This is called the valence orbit. <laughs> and they go into details. Semiconductors, germanium, silicon, they're just breaking down those. So yeah, they didn't go into the bore atom and stuff like that, like they did in uh, floor, uh, Floyd. So covalent bonds, oh, yeah, okay, important stuff to know. The flow of holes, I, I kind of like the graphics in Floyd a bit better, I think. The unbiased diode, depletion layers, barrier potentials, and then they're talking about uh, breakdown voltages, formalin electrons radiate light, so bingo, we get into LEDs. Definitions, laws, and derivations. Uh, we're going to get this all through the book, I suspect. And they break them down, they make a specific thing about that, uh, like... I don't think you need to really know the different, maybe? Oh, there's people will be flaming down in the comments down, of course you have to separate them. And others will be going, what? What? No, don't bother. Like, and once again, we've got our self-tests as well. So, oh, that's, that's pretty comprehensive. So the, uh, yeah, uh, critical thinking. That's quite nice. I like that. That's a plus. And then we've got diode theory. So once again, they show like specific ones, how to identify anode, cathode and stuff like that. It's really quite neat. So we're getting into the more practical stuff now. And they show it as ideal and then, you know, a switch and stuff like that. Second approximation. Once again, yeah, they, they follow, at least, they, you know, they're kind of like they were setting up the approximations thing and the laws and, and uh, derivations and stuff like that for a reason. Because they just approach it. Once again, this is, you know, two sort of, you know, subtly different approaches to teaching the same sort of thing. And some people will go, oh, God, that's so boring. I don't get that. Why? Why bother? And others will go, oh, wow, yeah, I love that. 
So, yeah, very different. Aha, now we're talking. Got a real data sheet in there. I'm liking that. Do they explain the data sheet? Forward drop, maximum reverse current, how to calculate bulk resistance and stuff like that. Ah, uh, yeah, load lines and specific, like sur surface mount packages, that's nice. And then we get into bridge rectifiers and where they're actually used in side systems. I remember that being in Floyd back in the day. And we're up to chapter four now. So we're actually, so they break it down into uh, chapters. And once again, the approximations and stuff like that. So, and we've got real pictures of real instruments and things like that. So this is pretty good. And I like these like good to know things, you know, 0.707. So, you know, this is good to know. Well, you know, stick that in your mind. And then how to hook up a scope to actually measure stuff. Yeah. I do like how they break down a bridge rectifier because, you know, for a beginner, bridge rectifiers are kind of uh, confusing. So they actually uh, remove the ones that aren't actually conducting and they show the ones that are conducting and things like that. How it, you know, swaps back and forth for each half cycle. So that's good. Real photos. Yep. Yeah, happy with that. And we're talking about ripple frequency and yep. Oh, now we're getting into voltage doublers and stuff like that. So that's neat. No, we well, going back to Floyd here, actually. Um, Floyd have the real data sheets as well. So thermal characteristics, forward operating currents. We we just didn't go through testing a, a diode with a DMM and stuff like that. So yeah, look at look, they've got the old fluke 70 series <laughs> there, which you know, it's kind of yeah, that's the look and feel of it. <laughs> So yeah, we just didn't go far enough through uh, Floyd. So sorry about jumping back and forth here. Application activity, a DC power supply. Well, yeah, okay. Oh, nice. Nice. Yep. And Floyd also has the uh, screenshots. Oh, I think those screenshots are better, actually. And there we go. Like a real demo board. You can uh, Maybe you can get that board or you can make it or whatever. Wow. Examples are comprehensive. Diodes, applications. Then we get into talking about solar power here in Floyd. Uh, to, once again, we're just, we've just uh, jumped into PWM, charge controllers, okay? That's great. Thanks very much. Now we're looking at special purpose diodes. Floyd has the special purpose diodes as well. So, yeah, they're very, very similar. Electroluminescence, so we're talking about LEDs and Veractors. Uh, they're, they're near identical. So yeah, Floyd and Malvino here, in terms of uh, covering diodes and special diodes and things like that, I'm probably going to give the edge to Floyd, but they're both very good. Um, I just like the graphics um, and info in Floyd a bit better, but yeah, there's not much in it. Let's go into Boylstead, and I've never uh, pronounced Nashelski as well. Um, sorry, Lewis, but <laughs> I always just call it Boylstead. Anyway, um, 11th edition. Whoa! Significant equations. Whoa, we jumped right in. Um, <laughs> geez, that's that's jarring. Wow, that'd turn anyone off straight away. Wow, no, no. Why have you put that first? No, why? <laughs> Once again, we're straight into semiconductors like PNs, and then straight into diodes, semiconductors, LEDs. Uh, they've got computer analysis. Um, diode applications, load line analysis, and things like that. And all gates. Oh, oh, diode and all gates. I don't think the others had that. Clippers, clampers, ap applications, and things like that. No. Not really a fan of the black on blue writing there. That's not terrific. Anyway, um, Kilby, there you go. Um, that, that's neat. It's always good to put photos in the first transistor and stuff like that. Got to give a thumbs up to that. Beauty. And, hey, an Intel Core i7 Extreme. <laughs> There you go, to keep the kitties happy, keep the kitties interested. Oh, I'm going to learn how an Intel Core i7 works. <laughs> yeah. Energy levels, yeah, the graphics aren't as good. No, I'm not, I'm not particularly blown away by this. Don't see anything special yet. Wow, that's a whopping, <laughs> whopping graph to show the, uh, show the standard characteristic. Leakage currents, temperature st uh, stability, a breakdown region. Okay, yeah, it's like done on like the grid paper kind of thing. It's just a little bit clunkier. The graphics just aren't as aren't as good, aren't as polished as the other two. Russell, oh, yeah, I, I like the historical stuff. That's good. AC or dynamic resistance stuff like that. Yeah, piecewise linear equivalent circuit. Oh, okay. Transition and diffusion capacitance. I don't think we uh, we didn't get that. This is a bit more detailed. 
I don't think we got that in the others. Like, I, once again, I could be wrong. Like, don't take my actual... Because I'd have to read through every single page of all four textbooks to know all the different stuff. But, yeah. Anyway, diode specification sheets. So they're getting into diode sheets. They're not... That's not a real... It's kind of a quasi-real one. They don't put the real... But they've stripped out the branding. Just like on uh, Mythbusters. They take out the brand of the product, you know. <laughs> I don't like that. Once again, it's good. They've got uh, good diagrams and they've got, you know, real photo, BK precision meter there. And the curve tracer. They're showing like a modern, <laughs> showing old tech. Come on. And LEDs, the different types and the construction and things like that. Yeah. Oh, seven segment displays. And computer analysis. They're talking about the software it comes with and stuff like that. I'm not going to look at any of that. Diet applications. It's more, it sort of the vibe of this one yeah, yeah it's all it's all about the vibe the vibe of this isn't as good as the other two i'd say you know some people aren't going to agree but yeah i just it's just the vibe yeah like they're covering all the same stuff like i i there's very little difference in these there's going to be very little difference in these four texts in in terms of covering stuff so don't buy one thinking that you're going to miss out on much really because like just like small things voltage triplers quadruplers oh there we go oh they got a tear down they got a tear down battery charger external appearance internal construction <laughs> that, that, that's kind of neat Oh, now we're talking about, like, we're already into, look, in inductive elements. Like, you know, it assumes that you know what inductors are and, and ringing and stuff like that. And, yeah, it, it just, like, bam, it just comes out of nowhere and hits you. And this is just in the diodes application section. Yeah, see, you could argue that they probably should have left that out. I like the fact that they're doing, like, input protection and stuff here. This, that's, you know, that's quite all right. Okay, let's look at Cedra Smith, shall we? Oxford University Press. Now this is uh, slightly different, as I said, to the ones before, because it starts out with signals and amplifiers, and then goes semiconductors, diodes, MOSFETs. Like, I no, like I, I don't agree with that. I, I think the others are better in the way they start. But once again, it, you know, it, it doesn't matter what order. It's not like you're going to systematically read through this textbook, really. So okay, they have their reason for starting out signals and amplifiers, op amps, and then semiconductors, and then diodes. So looks like we're going to have to jump to 134. But just as an example of what these textbooks are like, like this is like supposed to be a textbook for electronics, and it jumps straight into signals and amplifiers, and what is a signal and stuff like that, and they've got the current and voltage sources and, and f frequency spectrum of signals, like on practically the second page, and then we've got V sine omega t, like frequency spectrum of signals. I don't think that's a good way to start your textbook, really. <laughs> no, the other three are much better in the way they start. But a lot of people like Sedger and Smith. So, you know, um, and it's it's looking a bit bland. And like, look at this frequency response of STC networks and stuff like that. I mean, no, no, this is for the more uh, mathematically inclined brainiacs, really. Oh, and then we get into circuit basics um, and Ohm's law. <laughs> it's, it's like, yeah, like you're not going to find and current dividers, signal amplifiers like uh, Thevenin. We're, we're going to get, oh, AC circuit theory. Okay, we've got some basic stuff. Anyway, I need to, and then you jump into op amps. I need to get down to diodes. Chapter three, semiconductors. Uh, we had capacitive effects there, intrinsic semiconductors and stuff like that. The graphics aren't as good um, as as the others. No, I'm not seeing anything in Sedger and Smith to say it's better than the other three. No, not even the right way. i got to twist my head. Like, uh. No, 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 the formula's getting too complex already. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's lots of brackets. <laughs> That's, that's a big square root for your depletion or junction capacitance formula. You know, kitties are going to be looking at this going, oh, I've got to memorize that. Do I? No, you don't. Okay, diodes, the ideal diode. It's a short circuit. No, no, I'm I'm not. Transfer characteristics, okay. But no, it's, it's just blander and more technical than the others. I don't, not Sedger and Smith's not looking good so far. It'd want to get better. Once again, like, they've got tons of examples and stuff. No, no, look. No, the applications, no. No, Cedra and Smith, loser there. 
All right, let's have a look at Floyd for op amps, shall we? It won't go into great detail in the actual uh, screen capture here. Anyway, chapter outlines, introduction, op amps, op amps, input modes and parameters, negative feedback, uh, effects of negative feedback, bias, currents and offset voltages, open loop, uh, closed loop. Now we'll begin to study linear integrated circuits. Woo! Here we go. Uh, they've got to start out, of course, with the ideal, the ideal op amp. Here it is. Yep. So they jump straight into having like AV here, like, and they haven't actually explained what AV actually is. And the output voltage is AV times V in. So it's like almost a given that you know, like they, they literally have not explained that. They've jumped like straight in and it's just like assumed that you know what AV is. Like, <laughs> yeah, okay. We've got the internal block diagrams, pretty simplistic, but you know, it's basically what it is. So then now they're talking about single-ended and differential modes and things like that. Then they jump into common mode rejection ratio. See, I haven't seen them. Like, where are the basic rules of op amps like I've done in my video, which is, you know, the classic way of doing it. Like, you know, no current flows in and, you know, all the, all the basic rules of op amps. Um, so they haven't, they're not, it, it's not the best explanation. Talking about going green and reducing power dissipation in op amps and going to CMOS, uh, whatever. Now we're talking about bias currents and input impedance and uh, differential input impedance and yeah, okay. You know, there's nothing inherently wrong with this. It, it's okay, I just think it could be done better. That's all, it could have uh, started out more simplistic and now we're down in noise specs and we're not too many pages in comparisons of op amp parameters and stuff like that which is nice negative feedback and uh yeah okay everything's gonna be right 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 gonna have a good time tonight let's go for malvino shall we chapter out introduction op amps and then they jump straight into like the 741 is that i, I don't know about that anyway yeah it's exactly the same as floyd non-inverting input and basically open loop you know vol uh okay like but they don't explain any of that stuff so unless uh it might have maybe they might have explained that in the transistor section maybe there we go at least they go open loop voltage gain they have it in a table here you know and things like that so eh. um no this and then they jump into the 741 the industry standard and, of course, they've had a chapter before this on differential discrete transistor discrete, uh, differential amplifiers. Um, so, yeah, that would why that's why they're putting the internal schematic and, and doing that. Active loading, frequency compensation and stuff. Jeez, it's very... No, I... Wow, no, there's not much beginner op amp stuff there at all. Um, no, that, that's, that's worse than Floyd in introduction to op amps in my opinion in my humble opinion your mileage may vary okay let's go to boylstead introduction to op amps basic op amp that's a that's a little bit better single-ended operation double-ended output uh okay come and then they've jumped right into common mode option jump bleh, right into common mode rejection wow seriously that's your introduction to op amps um Wow. And then straight into common mode rejection. Wow. Differential amp. No. No, 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 no. We don't need to know about DC, but no. 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 Fail. That's the worst out of lot. No. Come on. No. But that's the thing. Like, there's nothing wrong with all this as, like, reference material. But if you're learning, buying this textbook and you want to learn about op amps, this is just... I, I actually remembered Floyd being better than this. But mind you, I haven't used it for, what, you know, since the late 80s. So, no. No, 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 no. This is under op amps. Like, we're, we're not dis designing discrete op amps here. If you were... Okay, this is all great, but okay, let's look into uh, Sedger and Smith, shall we? Here we are, operational amplifiers, two-stage CMOS op amp, common, oh, they're whack once again, jumping straight into common mode range and stuff like that. No, differential and multi-stage amps. Um, so Smith is more comprehensive, appears to be more comprehensive on this again, but uh, anyway, frequency response, but that'd be frequency response of BJTs and MOSFET, uh, like discrete amplifiers, output stages and power amplifiers. That's all designed in your own. Wow, this, you know, that's all right. But now here's operational amplifier circuits. 
and uh, 995 okay once again they've got the 741 as an example so are they uh well I'm not saying they're copying each other, but yeah, of course they're copying each other. Uh, the genie of analog. <laughs> Bob Wilder, yep. Now, see, here's your introduction to op amps. Here it is. What do you jump into? You jump into the two-stage fed amplifier. I mean, like, come on. No. No, 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 no. And then, do, like, okay, that's great if you're interested in that. That's absolutely fantastic, but that's not a way to learn operational amplifiers. Wow. No, I mean, maybe I'm biased because I do it my way in my video, um, which has been extremely popular, by the way. Everyone loves it. But I and then you got DC voltage gain like the no, 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 no. Oh, wow. No, come on. No, no, no. Wow. Really? That's your introduction. Op amps. Oh, wow. <laughs> the flying spaghetti wants to help you. I mean, that's just wow. That is terrible. No. No, no, no. Once again, great for the mathematically minded, uh, you know, people out there. But that's not a way to introduce op amps. That's wow. That's got to be the that's got to be the loser. I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah. oh. Then we go into the folded cascode. Okay, great. Okay, you know, <laughs> great if that's what you want. Voltage gain of the folded cascode uh, like, and slew rate. No, God. Wow, and then we go into the 741, like, and the internal schematic for the 741. Great. Okay, but no, no. God, give up. One last quick one. We'll go into active filters here. Uh, 763. This is Floyd. Okay, high pass, band pass, all the usual uh, culprits, filter response measurements and stuff like that. Let's see how their basic filter responses, uh, define pole and all that sort of jazz. Okay. Uh, low pass filter response there we go transition it's a bit more technical than like to start off with um but you know these are like university level textbooks really and the different responses there and quality factor yep band stop filter responses that looks all right <laughs> compare the uh, the three main culprits of course Have a brief synopsis of each one selective yep yeah, and how to do it with an op amp. Okay, now we're getting into the active stuff. Yep, yep. Example, I like the, you know, the example looks quite nice there. Yeah, no worries. That looks like it's doing the business. And then when you can cascade them together. Yeah. Yeah, Floyd's not doing anything wrong here. By quad. See what Malvino has to offer here. Ideal responses, unity gain, second order, blah, blah, blah. Ideal responses, low pass, high pass, band stop. See, that's sort of like simpler, sort of, you know, stops everything down there. Some people like that, some don't. Good to know. Yep, good to know you can combine them. It's not as uh, not as graphic oriented as uh, Floyd. Floyd's better in that respect. So, they're, yeah, they're really, uh, yeah, they're really doing the blocky stuff. Now we start getting into a proper response and then, yeah, uh, inverse Chevy Chev, okay. At least you're getting some more, like, realistic-looking responses there. But uh, they're not, like, overlaying. They haven't overlaid all three here. They've put, you know, they've put, like, a summary table kind of thing. But they haven't, like, overlaid them all like Floyd did. So I find that a bit... Uh, we've got uh, LC filters now. That's all right. But we're in a different section, are we? Real Our passive filters... Okay, now we've got active cell and key filters here. It ties into the simulation stuff they've done. Yeah, I uh, I think I'd still prefer Floyd in this one. Wow, I hadn't noticed this. Boylstead does not cover filters. I'm not blind, am I? I go... <laughs> okay, if you search for filters, like they've got some uh, like, you know, active filters down here in the op amp applications and stuff. But really, there's no dedicated section on filters, so yeah, I that's a that's a huge downside when the you know in a 900-page book when the others have it, that's a that's a pretty big oversight. Long tall Sally's gonna be with Slim. Short fat Fanny's gonna be there too. Feel good tonight. Everything's gonna be right, right, right. Gonna have a good time tonight. Rock and roll music gonna play on. Let's try Sedger and Smith, shall we? 
An important part of analog circuits. Well, not for Malvino. Um, anyway. No, right off the bat, they've jumped into trans filter transfer function. No, 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 no. Filters, no, the black box filter circuit. No, okay. No. Pass band shows a brief history of analog filters. A transfer function. I mean, that's just going to scare anyone away. Come on. Like, a ratio of two polynomials. Like, come on. Come on. No, 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 no. Come on. Just, no, we got our S-plane. And get, no, no. I mean, this is how they've jumped into it. Seriously? All that before getting into Butterworth and Chebyshev. I mean, <laughs> oh, Sedger and Smith. <laughs> no, come on. Nah, nah, I mean, seriously, <laughs> seriously, all the transmission zeros are the Chebyshev filter, I mean, you know, you don't, come on, oh, here we go, there we go, that's all right, except that they got the filter, uh, yeah, <laughs> got the equation in the filter type, <laughs> but anyway, um, that's okay, but I don't recommend Sedger and Smith. So I'm going to have to call it quits there because like I could just go on for hours and hours and hours and hours. So which out of these four books uh, do I recommend? As always, your mileage may vary. Leave it in the comments down below, which is your favorite, which one, or wouldn't you touch any of these and tell us which one you recommend down below because that, that that's what this is all about, really. Um, but comparing these four here... Um, I've got to say Floyd has the edge as I said maybe I'm biased because I used to use Floyd but just the the graphics the color the use of color and the just you know the lack of any sort of like detailed math or anything like that I, I really like uh, Floyd although second choice probably almost practically equivalent um, would be Malvino and Bates here. Uh, really, like, toss a coin between those two, um, really. So, yeah, I, I, a slight edge for Floyd there. Boylstead, no, no, not, no, the others are just clearly ahead of that. Uh, Sedger and Smith, which I've heard has lots of fans, no. It, I don't like the way they present stuff. There's far too much mathematical treatment inside Sedger and Smith, but like I said, like any of them for like learning op amps from basics is not, not that terrific. And maybe if I look into some of the other subjects as well, you know, BJTs and, and uh, MOSFETs and things like that, I, I might find something similar, but you can get the drift of these four uh, books here. So the most math, the, the most mathematical and detailed would be Sedra Smith, but I think that probably the easiest is Floyd or Malvino and Boylstead. Just I, I don't know why you'd pick Boylstead over any of the other three. I hope you enjoyed, found that at least bit interesting. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you want to see a shootout of like some really entry level stuff, because like I said, these are not entry level texts. They're, they're basically just university texts for uh, covering the basics of uh, component level electronics. So you're going to need other books if you want digital. Oh, one of them. Uh, yeah, Sedger and Smith has some uh, digital, but really, you know, if you want a proper digital book, just get a digital book anyway. And if you're curious to know which digital book I had back in the day, again, contacted for my own protection. And if you want to know what digital book that I had back in the day, it was, um, of course, I learned from uh, Colin Mitchell talking electronics. I've done a video, Colin Mitchell, I have to link it in down below. Anyway, um, I, I had um, uh, Tochi. Tochi, this is, uh, what was it, a fourth edition Tochi. So this, uh, once again, dates from the late 80s. And uh, I just thought Tochi was uh, really good in terms of digital. But if you want to see a digital um, book shootout. But anyway, that's one I used. I found it quite good. Uh, no worries whatsoever. And then you'll have other texts for like electromagnetics. And then you'll have your other physics and your Maxwell's equations and all your other stuff. Your uh, control theory books. And you'll have like books on, textbooks on everything. So yeah, it, it's just nuts. But like you need one of these like general purpose ones so that you can go and, uh, you know, if you forget what the Chebyshev filter type is or something or different, comparing the different filter types and responses and stuff like that, you know, you're going to have a book like this or you get a reference book. But as I said, um, everyone should have a copy of Art, Art of Electronics linked in down below and the new X chapters looks really good too. You can pre-order the X chapters. I think it's out in March 
or something like that. Anyway, you can pre-order, um, and I'll put links to all these um, Amazon down below. So yeah, watch the comment wars down below, because I'm sure it'll be very heated, which is the fun part of all this. Um, so yeah, Eva Floyd or Malvino here, I think, as the winner out of those, in my humble opinion. Let us know your thoughts, and uh, leave suggestions to other introductory level texts down below. Hope you liked it. Catch you next time. Thank <laughs> you.